This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. There are two main methods of interfacing with AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, the mouse and the keyboard. Many users will use the mouse almost exclusively, then using the keyboard only when it's unavoidable. However, the key to efficiency in AutoCAD is to take advantage of as many of the tools as you possibly can and use them when it's most appropriate. And that also includes the keyboard. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you will see a gray area with about one line in height. When you move your mouse over it, it should highlight as it is in the screen now. It contains the text, type a command. This is the command line. Here you can type in any command into AutoCAD. In these videos, I will often say, type on the command line. Well, this is where you need to type. Not only can you execute commands through the command line, but AutoCAD will give you feedback through the command line. Many commands have options to them. Several of them have even many more options and settings. These options will appear on the command line. For example, the circle command. To start the circle command through the command line, you can pick the command line itself or just start typing. Press enter. Now you'll see you're getting feedback from AutoCAD in two different places, the command line itself and at the crosshairs. If you aren't getting anything from the crosshairs, we'll talk about that in a little bit later. That's called the dynamic input. The command line will give you a few options. Now you're drawing a circle as it shows there, and it says specify the center point for the circle, or, and then in brackets, a list of other options. Now you can go ahead and just click on the option for 3P, which means instead of drawing a circle from the center point to its radius, you can draw a circle with three points. One, two, three. One of the newest features in AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT 2013 is a change in the appearance and usability of the command line. The command line is now a palette. We'll talk about palettes later, but a palette is something that you can move around. You can change the size of it. You can dock it. You can hide it. You can do a lot of different things to it. But you can put it back as well. You can change the height to make it as small as possible. You can even close it so that it's not there. AutoCAD still works, and I still have my dynamic input, but I lose a little bit of instructions. So if you're not familiar with the circle command or more non-common commands that have options to them, you may miss out on something. I recommend you leave the command line on. You can get it back by typing command line or Press Control 9 once you've turned it off. So the command line is very useful. I can click on it and just start typing into it, or I can just start typing. Plus, it will give you feedback on possible settings or other options for the command you're currently using, and it will give you instructions on what to do next, even as something as basic as drawing a line. It tells you line, specify first point. I pick my first point with a left click and now it says to specify next point, or undo. I can hit U, or type in the letter U, and press enter to undo what I've done. Or, I can just click on the blue highlighted bold area, or the command option, to get what I need. So you have many different ways to input through AutoCAD through the command line. Now when we are typing and doing things, as we are right now, you have the coordinates that are showing us in the command line. And now that I've picked the point, I'm getting a distance and an angle that are showing. This is the dynamic input. It adds a little something to the command line. It gives you more visual opportunities to interact with AutoCAD. I can type in the length of this line right now as it is highlighted. And as I move where my second point is, you'll notice that the distance changes. 
If I want it to be 10 units long, I just type in the number 10. I can press enter or tab, and now I can type in the degrees. This is a degree angle for my line. If I want it to go straight across, I just type in zero and press enter. And there's my line. And I continue going on. If I don't care what my distance is so much, but I want it to be drawn at a 45 degree angle, I can press enter now. And there's my line. That's dynamic input. You can turn that feature off and on through the status bar. Down here, you click it, and now it's turned off. Or, as you can see in the tooltip, I can press the F12 key to toggle it off and on. Now that it's off, I'll start the line command again. You see, I type in L for line, and nothing comes up on my crosshairs. I pick my first point, and now I can pick my second point. You see, so you get a little bit more to it but it also can be distracting. Many users don't like dynamic input because they don't want to be distracted or take up the screen space with the dynamic input. And in all honesty, there have been times when I'm trying to pick something in the middle of a command and I cannot see the screen because the tooltips from the dynamic input are blocking my view. So I've turned those off, but then I've quickly turned them back on. 98% of the time I'm using dynamic input. It gives you many more options visually. They're easier to spot and easier to work with that way. So you can execute your commands through the command line. AutoCAD will give you feedback through it, and many of the commands have options to them. Some of them will show up in the command line. Some of them will show up in your dynamic input. Now, you probably noticed that as I was typing in the line and circle commands that a list was shown. I'll try that again. If I type in the letter C for circle, because in AutoCAD, you can either find the command you want and click it in the ribbon and just start drawing, or you can type in your commands. I happen to type in a lot of commands because I find it useful and quicker that way. But as you start typing in your commands, and this is true if you have dynamic input on or off, but the feature called command complete will automatically populate a list in this little window for you of all of the commands that start with the letter C in this case. I can slide through them all and I can find them. As you can see, there are several of them. And as I type, that list will be refined. Now there are only three commands in AutoCAD that start with the letter C and I. That's SIP mode, circle, and circle rad. If I type in an R, the list becomes even smaller. AutoCAD will autocomplete my command for me, or I can go to one of the options in the list, and it will start the circle command. The same thing happens if I've turned off dynamic input, except that it happens in the command line. That's a nice feature, especially if it's a long command like data extraction. I only have to type in a few of the letters, and then I get the command. This is one of the keys to efficiency in AutoCAD, is using the keyboard in the autocomplete. You can type out an entire word for the command, like circle, or you can just type out the letter C. Many AutoCAD commands have what is called a keyboard shortcut. These shortcuts in the command line help you to start the commands with as few keystrokes as possible. The line command, for example, I can type in L, and I can get to the line command. I can hit C for circle. I can hit CP for copy. M for move, and so on. We'll talk about keyboard shortcuts later on in another section, but they are very efficient, and I'll show you why. I can hit E for erase, pick everything, and there we go, I'm done. Or I can just come up here to the modify section Look for the erase button. Where is it at here? There we go. And erase away. Now, the key factor here is to do as much work as you can in a short amount of time. And one way to do that is to use both hands in AutoCAD. You keep one hand on the mouse, one hand on the keyboard. You use these shortcuts in the command lines as you work with your mouse. I'm going to draw just a simple thing like a house. 
Very simple, very basic thing. I start drawing. I've only used my mouse in this case. Now if I want to start the line command again, I can move my mouse all the way up here, click line, and move all the way back. Or I can just hit L with my left hand and enter and start drawing. If I have to constantly go back and forth from commands in the ribbon to my drawing area, I lose time. You think that's not even a full second going from here to here. But then I have to come back again. That could take as much of a second, especially if I have to switch to another place on the ribbon. You get my point. So the more I can do, in my working area, the more efficient I'm going to be. So learn the keyboard shortcuts, learn to use dynamic input, and learn to use the command line. They will save you time and effort.